Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday morning devotion of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. My name is PJ. Thank you for joining me. You know what? I have to be honest, I almost completely forgot that I was on for devotions this morning as our family had a busy night last night. So Joy and I celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary and we and the kids were out late for dinner last night and we have some donuts after. So normally I would already have had the morning devotions prepared in my head like before I went to bed. But I completely forgot about it till, till, till Joy. Uh, she reminded me this morning, hey, you're on for devotions. So praise God for her and praise God for giving me what to say for this morning. I was really praying hard just an hour or so ago and was really asking God, God, please give me what to say. And as I did that, I remembered the passage we, we have for today. And I actually related more to the passage because of my immediate experience and need for Jesus' help. So as we will see in our passage for this morning, sometimes, not always, but sometimes the difficult thing in our lives Tough as they may be, I mean, my experience this morning was, of course, very trivial, but sometimes the very difficult things in our life are actually what bring a lot of people closer to God. And although God does not orchestrate tragedies or human pain directly, as really all the bad things in the world are actually the result of people's sin, so both our own sin, our own sin, or the sin of the people who live around us, or even the sin of the people who have lived like hundreds of years before us. They compound to, to bring about bad things in the world. But God still allows the consequences of humankind's mistakes to take place in order for us to realize our need for God and that His good and perfect will is really what is best for us. Now that may seem to be like a large concept, a large concept and might be difficult to understand. So let me read our passage for this morning. And as we answer our usual set of Bible, Bible discovery questions, I'll try to explain clearer what I mean. Uh, so our passage is found in John chapter 4, verses 43 to 54. And this story happens right after Jesus leaves Samaria on his way back to Galilee. So let's do that. Let's read John 4, 43 to 54. And um, let's try to find out what Jesus is telling us through his word. So I'm reading from the NIV. So from verse 43, it reads, After two days, he left for Galilee. Verse 44, now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Verse 46, once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he turned water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Then verse 48, this is what she said. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. So Jesus didn't even go with the official, but he just said, uh, go, your son will live. And then the man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on his way, his servants met, met him with the news that his boy was still living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. Alright, so that is our passage for today. Now I'll ask our usual Bible discovery questions to try and find out more what God may, re may be revealing to us 
through this story this morning. And the first usual question I ask is, what did you like most about our passage? Or what stood out to you the most in what we just read? And for me, what really struck me the most is the fact that Jesus knows exactly how people think. And he knows people's hearts even. He knows what's brewing inside us. So Jesus wasn't naive and he knew how people would treat him. And yet, Jesus still did whatever he had to do in order to give people a chance to know him and to learn to trust in him. So it didn't matter to Jesus if some people didn't really believe in him, some were oblivious of him. He still did whatever it took for people to get to know him. In verses 44, John highlighted how Jesus himself pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. And yet Jesus still went back to Galilee. So because if you remember what had been happening, as, as Jesus was performing many miracles, a lot of people seemed to like him and follow him even. But Jesus knew that most of them really just wanted to get so whatever it was they wanted out of him. But they didn't really honor Jesus as their Lord. They really didn't trust Jesus to be the master or the boss of their lives. Jesus only mattered to them when they needed his help. Like if they could get a miracle out of him or maybe if, if Jesus um, would be able to liberate Israel from Roman oppression. And, these, and this was especially true for the people who knew Jesus the most, like the people from his hometown who saw him growing up. Uh, they thought to themselves, sure, Jesus is great. He says wise things. You know, Jesus became a great teacher. And he even does miracles now. But who is Jesus to claim that he is better than me or that he knows how I should live my life? He's just a carpenter's son. So that was what the people were thinking. And when Jesus' words and teachings challenge the people's agendas and their own preferred way of living, you know, how they wanted to live their lives, their true colors came out. And they held Jesus in contempt. They didn't like him. So rather than admitting that Jesus is right and really trusting in him for their lives, they, they didn't want Jesus anymore. They thought that Jesus wasn't worthy of their complete trust and allegiance. Sure, miracles were good. They were fine. We could get some benefit out of that. But really surrendering the way I live my life to Jesus, these people weren't happy. And yet, Jesus was still willing to do whatever he had to do in order to bring people to the light of salvation. And of course, that, that is by trusting in Jesus. We're only saved by putting our faith, our trust in Jesus. And I believe um, what I've just mentioned already answers the next two questions I normally ask for Bible discovery. And those two questions are, do you think the passage we just read says anything about God? And do you think, the next question is, do you think the passage says anything about people? So those two questions, does the passage say anything about God? Or and does the passage say anything about people? So, as already mentioned, despite of people's distrust of God, God will still do all that he has to do in order to help us to get to know him and to experience the free salvation that he offers. Because he loves us, God just wants the best for us. So he will do whatever he needs to do to help us experience salvation, even if that means that we have to experience difficult things in life because sometimes it's the difficult things in life the negative effects of sin in the world that draw people to turn to god to jesus we read in our story today how this certain royal official came to jesus in desperation because his son was dying now we don't know exactly who this royal official is but I believe it would be fair to assume that if his son wasn't put in a life and death situation, this royal official and his whole household even would have had a very slim chance of even considering Jesus to be their savior 
let alone their master or lord. So the child's life-threatening sickness, tragic as it was, and of course it was the effect of the brokenness of the physical world that we now live in, so his sickness was not necessarily uh, because of his own sin or his family's sin, but it was just the effect of sin in general. Sin has been in the world and it has been corrupting God's good creation, including our physical bodies, since humankind first disobeyed God's perfect and good plan. So the boy's sickness is, in general, an effect of sin. But still, God was able to use this boy's sickness in order to bring his father, and in order to give his father and their whole household a chance for salvation. God used the boy's sickness to bring his father to Jesus. But of course, it wasn't an easy experience, nor an easy choice as well, um, for this father to, to probably bring his son to Jesus. So I believe the father, um, he was a royal official, and he was probably um, respected in the community. He was most likely very well educated, and he had power as a royal official. And he probably brought his son to the best doctors already. And now, well, because of course the son didn't, didn't get well, but now what he had to do was to trust this son of a carpenter who was uneducated and who grew up in a backwater town. How difficult was that for, for this royal official? But the royal official was desperate, so he turned to Jesus. And Jesus' Jesus' response to him wasn't even what he expected. The official thought that Jesus had to, to go to see his son and to heal him. You know, he was asking Jesus, Jesus, could you come with me? But Jesus didn't even do what the official asked. Jesus didn't come with him. Jesus simply said in verse 50, go. So he sent him away, go, your son will live. He, he might have been surprised, but he trusted in Jesus. So there was no special ritual, no laying of hands, no ceremony, or anything that people would expect or this official would have expected. But as we read, the royal official simply took Jesus at his word and his son lived. You see, sometimes Jesus' solution for us or his blessings for us will not look as how we expect to be blessed. But what we need to do, even in those situations, is to simply trust in Jesus. We need to take Jesus at his word. And in time, as time passes, we will then find out how Jesus' ways are actually what is best for us. So even in the royal official's experience, he, he had to trust Jesus initially. And it wasn't until he found out from his servants later on that his son got well at the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, has said to him, your son will live, that he finally found out it or experienced for himself Jesus' power. And because of that, he and his household believe in Jesus and experience salvation. Of course, they moved on, they moved forward. They, they weren't just stuck in, oh, I, I already got what I wanted from Jesus. Now we forget about him completely. No, what happened? Because of his experience of Jesus and his proper response, he and his household experienced salvation. They truly believed beyond from just getting what they wanted. Now, this is still true even today. If you doubt Jesus and his power, if you don't trust in him completely, then just give Jesus a chance. Put your faith in him even initially, and through that, you will experience his power. So it may not be exactly how you envision it, you know, how Jesus will work and move. Sometimes he won't even solve what we think needs to be solved. Jesus may not give you exactly what you want, or again, how you want your problems to be solved. But if you trust in Jesus, if you put your faith in him, you will receive salvation. And you will also receive exactly what you need in this world 
to experience God's good plan for you. Again, Jesus' will, his plan, his good plan may look or feel very different from what you think is good or pleasant. But once you trust in Jesus, you will find out in time, in his perfect time, you will find out that what he has planned and what he has desired for you is actually better than what you can ever ask or even imagine for yourself and even the people around you. But it will start with actually trusting in Jesus. And we can trust in Jesus if we get to know him. And the beginning of getting to know Jesus is through his word. It's by um, knowing about him and then, of course, getting to know him personally as we move forward. The Bible says faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. So don't just trust in what you want or, or what you know or, or simply uh, be religious and try to obey Jesus to get what you want. Rather, trust in Jesus genuinely and desire what, whatever it is he has in store for you. Not your, not your own agenda. And as you trust in Jesus, you will experience the best life ever in the presence of God. So the last question I usually ask is, what we have what if what we have read today were true what do you think you have to do about that so if jesus really knows and wants what is best for us if his plan is better than what we ever ask or imagine and even if he sometimes allows difficult things to happen in our lives what do we think we have to do about that in regard to trusting in jesus what do I need to do as a person to really show Jesus or express my trust in Jesus in my everyday life? So that's all I end here. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you. Although it is a bit challenging, it involves trusting in you for things that we don't know. We trust, Lord Jesus. We still want to trust. And we pray that you help us to trust. Um, that whatever you, you, you plan or your desire for us is actually what is best for us. And truly that salvation is found only in you. So help us to do this, Lord Jesus, to trust in you, um, first and foremost for salvation, for eternal life, but also for each and every detail of our lives. As we go about in this world, help us to trust that what you want us to do, how you want us to live is actually what what is good for us, what's best for us, even if sometimes it doesn't feel like that, or it, even if sometimes it doesn't feel that way, or if it doesn't look that way, help us to trust in you, Lord Jesus, that your will is always good and best for us. So we commit ourselves to you, God, pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.